Hi everyone, it's Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio and this short little video is going to be about my favorite coloring tools. Now I have used a ton of stuff over the last 10 years while I've learned to color myself on fabric, uh, but it's come down to just this kind of basic few that you see here on my table. Now I'm going to come down and zoom in a bit and I'm going to discuss each one of these and their pros and cons and why I like them and why you should like them if you're going to color on fabric. So as I come down, I'm going to bring this down to my all-time favorite, and I think you'll find most people who color on fabric prefer ink tense pencils. These are dried ink, both in pencil form and at the bottom you can see there in block form. And I'm gonna just step down here a minute. I'm on a ladder right now so I could get these focused in. And pardon me for the for the uh, movement here, but I want to open both of these here real quick so that you can see them. The blocks are solid color. Yeah. Now I use the blocks typically when I want to uh, color large areas, and I just dip my brush in fabric medium, and I can rub it directly onto the block. In fact, if you'll notice. This one right here, it probably I should have done a better job of cleaning it, but I left fabric medium on it and it's now dried. Um, later on, I'll have to scrape that off if I want to continue to color with that particular piece. Anyway, just like the pencils, these come in 72 different colors. The other thing you can do with these is you can scrape them uh, or grind them or use a, a bit of a cheese shredder and grate them uh, very finely and create a powder mix it with fabric medium, and then you can create your own paint with that. So those are the things that I use for very large areas that need to be colored. And of course, once again, just as you can with the pencils, you can mix and match these. You can uh, grind several different colors up and make your own custom color if you want. Just make sure when you do that, of course, that you make enough when you do it the first go around so that you can have enough of that particular color to color whatever it is you're coloring with. Okay, I'm going to put that up and then move on to the pencils. Uh, now, everybody has seen these pencils. Uh, this is just what everybody who colors on fabric tends to use. And this is, again, the 72 pack. Um, there is another layer of pencils underneath here, so I'm just going to show you the top layer. Um, and I actually keep these pencils usually in a carrying case, but the ones that are missing today are things that I'm going to use on some of my Zen by the Sea stuff, yay, because um, I'm getting ready to do instructions for that. Anyway, I'll be using these pencils quite a lot. I have used them in just about everything that I've ever colored. They're extremely versatile. I believe if you check out my website, actually if you check YouTube in general, you will find a ton of videos on how to use ink tense pencils um, on fabric. Some people, for instance, Helen Goddard, she uses it with Strictly Water. Um, she's a brave lady. She's a much better artist than I am. I stick with fabric medium so that I know that I don't uh, uh, cause things to bleed or to, to, to kind of, uh, I don't know, water and I just don't get along when it comes to coloring on fabric, so I stick with the fabric medium. Okay. So that's that, and um, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna stick into the pencils before we get over to markers. Um, and actually, I'll just move these markers up here and talk about watercolors. Now, this is just a single set of watercolors, and I've had these for quite some time. Let me get these open so that you can see them. And they're Faber-Castell. I actually like them overall as a brand. They have several different types of watercolor pencils, but that's the key here. Anything that is watercolor or water soluble are are just as easy to use uh, and and sometimes preferable to the ink tense pencils because the ink tense pencils have an extremely vivid color which sometimes is is exactly what you want but other times you want maybe a more pastel color so i tend to typically use watercolors to get lighter shades of coloring and of course they come in a wide variety of colors. This is the 36 pack, but I think these go all the way up to maybe even 125. It, this isn't the only brand out there. This is just a particular brand I like, but any watercolor pencil 
will function in the same way as these Faber-Castells. This just happens to be a brand that I've had for quite some time and I enjoy using them. Now the other thing, and I've just recently discovered these, are these Curran Dosh, um, they're Swiss uh, made, these Neocolor Crayons. They are water soluble. And just like the Ink Tense blocks, they're awesome for coloring large areas. And um, they go on very smoothly. They work very well with fabric medium. Um, they're very, um, they're easy to, to get, again, some very transparent, light colored colors out. And, and if you'll also look at the colors themselves, a lot of these are very pale. That's not something that you see with the Inktense pencils. So again, falling back onto watercolors to get more pastel or lighter color variations of, of color, I like to fall back on anything that is water soluble, such as these. Now, I'll tell you the only thing I don't like about these is the paper. Um, you gotta have to peel that away before you sharpen it. And a lot of times when you sharpen these, you kind of waste a lot of the color. Uh, so let me advise you that uh, if you're going to get these, if you do use a pencil sharpener, use a manual one so maybe you can capture some of those little color filings and then you can use those and, and put them in fabric medium and make your own paint with them. Uh, these are expensive. I'll be frank with you, they're the most expensive item that I have that I use in coloring. But of course, just like everything, once you make the initial investment, uh, you they, they last forever. Okay, so that's these watercolor soluble crayons. Now that's it for the pencils. So the next thing I want to move on to are fabric markers. And the beauty about fabric markers is this. You color with them, you let them dry, they're colored fast for the most part. Some will state that you have to heat set them which in the case of like these tennis shoes that are shown here on the front cover, all you would do is throw it in a hot um, dryer and it will set the color that way. But of course, as with most of my stuff, you can hit it with a very hot dry iron uh, with a press cloth over it to protect the work and it will set the color. In any event, I think this is the best thing for beginners to use. The only thing I will say about fabric markers in general, not just this set, but my Fabricos that I use or anything that Tulip makes, they can be streaky and sometimes it's a bit difficult to use um, just by themselves. So I've made a couple of videos out of my website that show how to use them with fabric markers and it actually will help get rid of some of the streakiness and it'll also help you use um, them to get lighter colors when you combine them with fabric medium. But anyway, obviously a very easy, simple way to color on fabric is by using fabric markers. And they're specifically made so that they don't run or they don't bleed. Okay, now my final favorite type of product to use are gel pens. And I'm gonna focus on these three right here. In fact, I'm gonna move this one up and put it with the other three. These are all made by Sakura under the brand name of Jelly Roll. You see that here. Now Jelly Roll Classics come in just plain color. They come in Stardust, which is kind of a sparkly color. They come in Moonlight, which mm, I guess I would call these more kind of neon, brighter colors. But every single one of these, once you use them on fabric, and once you heat set them, these are very permanent color. Um, I'll just pull this package away to show you that there's there's several more colors in the Stardust. I think there's a total of 10. Um, but these come in a variety of different types of packages and very versatile, very easy to use. They also have various different size tips so that if you want a nice fat tip to color a lot, you can do that. Or you can have get ones with very fine tips and they're much, much easier to use. Um, you don't have to use fabric medium with these. In fact, I would encourage you not to. So any kind of gel pen is going to be fine on its own without fabric medium, but you do have to heat set it. Which brings me to the last set of, of Jelly Roll pens. Uh, and they're not Jelly Roll pens, they're just plain gel pens. And they go under the name of, of Kaisercraft. Let me zoom in here real quick. I love these pens. 
Um, they are, let's see here. Let me get this open for you real quick so that you can see this. Love the case. Uh, they're made in Australia, or they come from Australia. I think they're actually made in China. Um, and they come in a wide variety of colors. They come in metallics and neo, uh, neons. Uh, they have their own glitter color and then pastel color. The only thing you'll notice is that every single one of these are labeled. And that is because they don't put any kind of color name or color number on their pins. So I have got a, a master color code that I use whenever I use these in my kits. And I often include uh, stickers like those so that people can label them so they know which color is which. Well, that's about it. Um, each one of these has their uh, purpose and I really enjoy using them all. Um, with the new Zen by the Sea series that's coming out soon, um, all of these are, are really what I've used. Um, nothing else. I'm trying to simplify the types of products that I use. So I hope you found this helpful. Let me zoom back out again and kind of give you a bird's eye view. So if you're in the market to look for coloring tools to color on fabric, I would suggest any of these or all of these. Hope this helps, and if you have any questions regarding this video or anything else you see on my website, please don't hesitate to email me at Medina Dom Arts. That's M-E-D-I-N-A-D-O-M-A-R-T-S at AOL.com. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.